Hey everybody. On July 2nd, a weather system moved over Chicago. Now, weather moving over Chicago is not particularly interesting. But there were two factors about this weather system that made it both very interesting and, for many people in the area, devastating. The first was that this weather system moved very slowly. The second part was that it was a low pressure system and it moved counterclockwise. Due to its position over Chicago and its slow movement towards the east, the result was this weather system dumped 18 centimeters on parts of Chicago within only a few hours. The result was flooding all throughout the north and the west sides of the city. This, sadly, also affected me. So, that day began like a lot of other days. It was hot, and the rain began to fall around 8 in the morning. And it kept falling, and falling, and time kept going. And the weather forecasters had said that the rain should have stopped around noon, but that didn't happen. 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, it kept raining. It didn't stop. Now, some of you may know that my basement flooded last year. We have a system in place that prevents, that is designed to prevent our basement from flooding again, and I'll explain this in a moment. Needless to say, when the rain began on Monday, we activated that system by closing a valve to prevent water from the city's wastewater line from coming into our basement. And so while we watched the rain fall, we felt relieved in some ways, and in a way, we also felt safe and secure that our basement would not flood again. Ten minutes after two o'clock, I went from I walked from the living room to the top of the stairs and looked into the basement, and my heart completely sank. I saw about three centimeters of water covering the entire basement. Our basement was flooding again. So I shouted to my husband and he was like, what? I ran down the stairs and as he followed me amongst lots of cuss words and shouting and questions, you know, posed to no one and everyone, perhaps even God, we began to grab the, our things from the basement and move them upstairs. And those things which were too heavy for us began to stack one on top of the other. We did not know how, how high the water would rise. We did not know how long it would continue. We simply knew at that moment that it was happening. Here is a picture taken of the basement from the top of the stairs about a minute after I discovered that it was flooding. It doesn't look like much, but you can see, you should be able to see light, the, the lights from the ceiling reflecting off the surface of the water. It was flooded, it was full of water. We scrambled to save as much of our belongings and our possessions down in the basement as we could. And we were fortunate. We really didn't lose anything of significant value. I did lose a few things of personal value, which I'm pretty bummed about, but you know, no one was hurt. No one lost their lives. Kind of a, a loss that I can deal with. About an hour to an hour and 10 minutes after the flooding began, the water began to recede. 
we could hear the water uh, receding into the storm drain located in the floor of the basement because of the sound. Anybody who has ever had a full bathtub or a full sink and, and then pulled the, the stopper knows that that sound, right? This sound is now magnified as the drain is rather big, right? About, I don't know, about the size of a grapefruit. It's a big drain. So we could hear that sound. That sound then was our alarm bell to leave the house and go to Home Depot, the local hardware store. The cleanup would have to begin immediately. We drove to the nearest Home Depot, which was about four kilometers away. It was still, and this is important, it was still raining. So the rain had been falling by this point for over seven hours. Many of the streets in our neighborhood were flooded, as were some of the main streets between our house and the Home Depot. This was, it was clear to us that this was going to be a huge problem for the city and that it had only begun. We arrived at the Home Depot and went immediately. We made a beeline for the equipment rental area. And there we rented a carpet cleaner or a carpet shampooer and two large blowers or fans that are designed to dry carpet or anything that's on the floor. As we were paying for and signing all of the paperwork for this equipment, a line had formed behind us. And by the time we left, there were about 10 people waiting to do exactly the same thing. My hunch was correct that we had to get to Home Depot as soon as possible because other people would certainly be, have, would certainly have the same thought that I had that they had to start cleaning their basements immediately. Here are some pictures of the basement before we had a chance to do any of the cleanup. So you can see that there's furniture stacked on top of each other, that things are pushed around, that uh, everything seems just wildly disorganized, and that's because it was. We were doing our best to keep things away from the water, or if it, had, if, it would, if it had already gotten wet, then to dry it off and get it cleaned as soon as possible. Our neighbors had loaned us a shop vac. And the shop vac is something like a large industrial vacuum that allows the, the suck up of both dry things like dirt and rocks, but also, and crucially, water. Having that shop vac was very helpful to us as it allowed my husband to start cleaning one side of the basement while I started cleaning the other side and then we would meet in the middle. In a flood like this, there are two goals that are very similar and that is to get water out as quickly as possible. So we spent the majority of our time using the carpet cleaner and the shop vac to suck as much water out of the carpet as possible. And then also pointing the blowers towards the walls, specifically the baseboards. And the baseboard is that like maybe five centimeters of wood that goes along the floor, the perimeter of a room. And the reason for that is water that touches the wall or the drywall can get can cause mold or mildew if it sits for too long mold and mildew are serious threats to human health and they are also when they appear you essentially have to cut out the wall and completely replace it we did not want to go through that again Over the next 36 hours, the constant cleaning and drying of the basement had its intended effect. We were able to prevent any significant damage to the house itself 
or to lose any of our possessions. So overall, we actually came out pretty well. We seem to be out of the woods. In these pictures, you can see the basement after the cleanup had ended and we had replaced and put back our furniture and belongings. You can see that things look more or less organized and that the dogs are back onto the couch where they always are. They do not seem to notice that anything had happened uh, and we don't detect any smell, any odor, anything that would indicate that we had only 36 hours earlier experienced uh, a flood of about five to six centimeters of water throughout the basement. So at the end of the story, I can say we survived. We came out of this much better than other people did. And so we have the question, why? Why did our basement flood again? The system that is in our house is designed to prevent a flood. Now, as many of you remember, my house, our, our basement flooded last year during the storms of September 2022. And we had taken steps to ensure or reduce the risk that this would happen again. So what happened? So in our house, in our basement, there is a valve and that valve can be open and closed manually. Now, on the most recent flood, on the day of the most recent flood, we closed that valve around eight in the morning when we noticed, when we saw the rain, because we were afraid of a flood happening again. Now, that valve shuts off any flow of water out of the house. So obviously we can't use the bathroom, we can't run the shower, we can't do anything with water because the water would, could not leave. But that's a sacrifice we, we would make because the risk of water coming back into the house was much, much higher. That was the bigger threat. So during this most recent flood, we closed the valve. So before the flood, I should say, we closed the valve but then at two o'clock or shortly thereafter, water began to flood into our basement. We couldn't understand how in the world that happened. The valve was shut. So what we learned was that the volume of water caused by the rain and then caused by the collective runoff in the north and west parts of the city overwhelmed the sewer and the stormwater system designed to carry water into a treatment center in the south of the city. This was overwhelmed. The city would actually tell me that that system was designed to handle only between seven and eight centimeters of water every two to three hours, but we received 18 in six. So far more capacity than it was designed to withstand. And so what we learned was that because of the high water pressure coming from the sewer and the stormwater system, it simply broke through the valve. There was no way for the valve to withstand that kind of high water pressure. And so our basement flooded again. This most recent storm, as I've said before, dumped 18 centimeters of rain on the part of the city where we lived. Now, a, last year, a storm, similar storm, dumped 15 centimeters of water on the place where we lived. And so we have to think about the future, right? So if climate change is real, and it is, and however, the valve system in our basement cannot and was not designed to tolerate such high water pressures caused by massive rainfall. We have to figure out what to do in the future. 
we cannot change the climate, we cannot change the weather, but we can change the infrastructure of our house. As we talked to our neighbors after this most recent storm, uh, I was surprised at how often people said that not only had their basements flooded, but that these floods had become more and more common. That back in the 2000s, 1990s, 1980s, that people's basements may be flooded once every 10 years, once every 20 years, but now people's basements are flooding every year. That's not okay. So we have to now prepare for the future. And this is kind of alarming. I hope that this video was in some way informative, whether it was about the vocabulary, the language, whether about the situation itself, about maybe what just me and my husband as homeowners are confronting and having to manage in our own lives. I know that disasters are happening everywhere. Sometimes they're big and they make the news and sometimes they're localized and they don't make the news. Uh, throughout this video and throughout this experience, I have been repeatedly humbled by the experiences of others. That those people, that families who did not have the same resources and opportunities that, that James and I have, uh, have been far, have been affected far greater than we have. So this has been an eye-opening experience for me, and this has also been an opportunity for me to empathize uh, in a greater way with the people who share this city with me.